All right. Hey, everyone. So today is a, I'm going to do a MCAT question of the day about the henderson hasselbalch equation. Uh, and so even if you're not taking the MCAT and you want to learn a bit about the henderson hasselbalch equation, this question is going to be a great way to do so. So let's check it out. It says a hypothetical weak acid HA has a pKa of 5. It is being titrated by a strong base, sodium hydroxide. Midway through the process of the titration, the pH of the titration mixture is found to be 4. At this point, what percent of the original acid, HA, is deprotonated? So this is a perfect example of a henderson hasselbalch equation problem. Why? Because anytime you see pH and pKa together in a question stem, that's almost always an, um, an indication you will need to use the henderson hasselbalch equation, okay? And in this problem, you can see right away the two key things we're given is the pH and the pKa. More importantly, it also makes a reference to the original acid uh, being deprotonated, which is kind of a, like a, this original acid being deprotonated is referring to the ratio between HA and A-, minus, right? Because in this process, in this titration, what's actually happening is HA is being titrated by a base, which is sodium hydroxide. And in the process of this titration, you end up getting water and um, sodium plus and A-, minus, right? And so you get A- minus and HA, right? Um, and so ultimately, this is a reference to the henderson hasselbalch equation, and it's asking us to use the henderson hasselbalch equation. But some of you may even be wondering, what the heck is the henderson hasselbalch equation? So let's go straight into it. This is the simplest form of the henderson hasselbalch equation right here. And you'll see right away it says pH is equal to pKa plus log of A minus over HA. So it works out perfectly because we have our hypothetical HA here, but even if we didn't, this A minus is referring to the base, okay, of whatever acid it is that you're um, evaluating. And this HA is referring to the acid of whatever acid it is that you're evaluating. So let me give you a real life application here. Okay, real life. But before I do that, let me also make sure you understand that list, whenever it says log and it doesn't actually have a base associated with it, this is base 10. Okay. I know that's something that people get confused. So, with that being said, let's go straight into a real life application. So, the real life application is the fact that your body uses a bicarbonate buffer system. In your body, you have this thing called carbonic acid, H2CO3. And so let me draw in two and then draw in the three. And that H2CO3 breaks down into H plus and HCO3 minus. So let me draw this H plus right here, HCO3 minus. So these are, this is what it breaks down into. And now, if you wanted to apply the henderson hasselbalch to this case, you'd say pH is equal to pKa, right? pKa of carbonic acid, H2CO3, plus log of bicarbonate, HCO3 minus, over 2CO3. So this is how you would apply it to our body. And this is actually something that is used in our body. And this is how we would find the pH of our own body's um, blood. And this is what is used to find the pH of our own body's blood. Because this is a buffer system. Because you have uh, a conjugate base and you have its acid, right? But we're not evaluating blood. I just wanted to show you how to apply it to a system where you didn't have a hypothetical acid. But in our case, the problem is actually a bit easier because we are told exactly what to plug into this equation. It says a hypothetical weak acid, HA, has a pKa of 5. So we're going to take that pKa and we're going to plug it in into that pKa section, uh, section of the equation. And then we know it's being titrated by a strong base. Midway through the process, the pH of the titration is found to be 4. And you're going to take that 4 
and as the arrow shows, you're going to plug into the PA section. So it says if we did that, we get 4 is equal to 5, right? Plus log of a minus over h a. Right? That's what we would get. Now let's simplify this because now we get negative 1 is equal to log of a minus over h a. Right? That's a simplified version of that equation. And now, remember, this is where we're going to have to remember that this is a log base 10. And if we remember how logs work, this ultimately ends up being 10 to the negative 1, which is equal to 1 tenth. So if you didn't know that, you can pull out your handy dandy calculator, but on the MCAT, you don't give a calculator, so you should get used to doing negative uh, exponents. 10 to the negative 1, which is equal to 1 tenth, is equal to a minus over h a. Okay, and that's ultimately what we get. But what is this question asking? This question is asking us what percent of the original acid, which is HA, what percent of the original acid, HA, is deprotonated? So it's asking us how much of HA is deprotonated. Um, some of you might be tempted right away to answer one-tenth, because that's what we found, right? We found one-tenth, but that's actually not the answer here. And I'll tell you why that's not the answer. Let me show you why. Because so far we've realized that the concentration of A minus over HA is equal to one ten. But this doesn't mean that's the amount that's deprotonated, because this is basically saying for um, this is basically saying you have one molecule A minus for 10 molecules of HA. Ten molecules of HA, right? So if I were to actually draw this out, let's say A minus, I'm going to draw A minus in green, and HA I'm going to draw in red, okay? Then it would be saying you have A minus right here, one, one green, but then for every one A minus you have ten HAs, right? Three, four, so what percent of HA is dissociated? Well, you have one molecule of A minus for every how many total molecules? How many total molecules are here? There are actually 11 total molecules, right? So the percent dissociated is 1 out of 11. Because 1 A minus for every 10 HA, which means that 1 out of 11 molecules total is, is how many are dissociated, right? And 1 out of 11 is actually 9%, right? Because if you multiply the top and bottom by 9, you get 9 over 99, which is about uh, 9%. And so ultimately, the answer to this question is A. Right, um, and so this is a very just clever way of doing the hemsden hasselbalg equation, but ultimately it also leads us to a very important discovery that it's not actually 10. Like you can never assume that the um, ratio you get in the middle, this intermediate, that's not the actual percent dissociated. The percent dissociated would have to be uh, taking into account the total number of molecules you have, hypothetically. And so with that, the answer is actually A, and um, that's where I'll leave this question. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a big thumbs up if you did. Uh, see you in the next one.